Peter, Uncle Peter, I have been thinking about something. What's that, Carol? I've noticed that in my classes at school and in the history books that there is nothing that is said about God. What you say is very true. Many people don't believe in God and they don't see any need to include him and his mighty acts in the story of history. That is silly. God is the greatest of all. Do they really know what God is like? That's a good question. A lot of people only heard about him and they are too busy with their own lives even to think about God. Even though God is most important of all down through time, men have refused to listen to God. They don't care about his word. They even set up false gods for themselves to worship. Uncle Peter, but God created everything. He is greater than anything he made and or any old false gods they could make. You are right, John. But people are most interested in pleasing themselves than they are in knowing the one who created them. Does God just allow them to get away with that? Carol, remember the flood? God judged the whole world then because they refused to believe in him. Everyone died except Noah and his family. They believed God, so God took care of them. Uncle Peter, what happened after the flood? Did all the people born from Noah's family believe in God? I'm sorry to say they didn't. People were sinners then, just like now. God even had a record of every man's deed. However, even though God knows every thought we think and every word we say, he won't send a flood again to destroy all people. Oh, every thought and deed? That's scary. God still hates sin, doesn't he, Uncle Peter? Yes, God never changes. He is always righteous and holy and faithful. Let's look in the Bible where it tells us about another time when God's judgment of man's sin changed the whole course of history. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to this week's Sunday School service here at Membley Baptist Church. My name is Teacher Kevin, and we extend a warm welcome to everyone who is watching us from the comfort of their home, uh, wherever it is that you are catching us from. Uh, we are going to have a lovely time, and we hope that you will be with us. As always, we always it's, al it's always good to start with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the goodness that you've shown us. Thank you for your faithfulness, Almighty Father. Lord, even as we start this uh, Sunday school service, may you help us, O oh Lord, to understand each and everything that we are going to learn, O oh Lord, to the glory and to the honor of your name. For it is in Jesus' name do we pray and believe, and every boy and girl says, Amen. Okay? Amen. Now, this week, uh, if you're joining us for the very first time, uh, we've been learning about the story of God, and we've started all the way from Genesis chapter 1. Now, this week, uh, if you're joining us for the very first time, we'd like to start uh, or to look at the story of Noah, okay? The story of Noah. Now, we're going to start with... Uh, or you're going to carry off from where Noah uh, came off the ark. Remember, before uh, it all started, God had promised uh, Noah that he would save Noah and his family. Not because that Noah was good, but because Noah believed in God and everything that God had said. And one thing we've been looking at over the past few months is that God is always pleased with those who believe in him and those who trust in him and uh, those who come to him in the way that God wants. So during Noah's days, uh, the world was in a pretty bad place. Everyone did as they wanted. People sinned. People uh, loved their sin more than they loved God. People never even uh, used to hear the word of God anymore. They, everyone did whatever pleased them in their eyes. And because of this, God uh, uh, told Noah that he is going to send a flood that is going to punish each and everyone who had disobeyed 
him. But he gave Noah special instructions to construct an ark or a very big boat that would save him and anyone else uh, who wanted to come in. So Noah, uh, for 120 years, Noah continued uh, pleading with people as he built the ark to turn and repent of their sins. But people only uh, uh, mocked him because uh, they, they, they did not think that uh, it would rain. Remember, before this time, it had never rained. Uh, so Noah, after 120 years, he had finished building the ark. He entered into the ark, and God shut the door behind him. And God sent a rain that lasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, if you have your Bibles, that after 150 days, Genesis chapter 8, after 150 days, uh, all the waters dried up, okay? All the waters dried up. Genesis chapter 8, from verse 1 to 4, that God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters uh, decreased. The fountains of the deep and the windows in heaven, or the clouds, uh, were stopped, and the rain from heaven uh, was restrained and the waters returned off from the earth continually and at the end of 150 days all the waters had dried up okay and so God remembered Noah and everyone who was inside the ark and he decided that it was time to dry up the world remember the whole world was full of water Okay, even the highest mountains. And after 150 days, all the waters were dried up. And so God uh, decided that uh, he, he, he'd stop the rain. And when he stopped the rain, uh, he had Noah and his family come out of the ark. And God did something else. In Genesis 9, 1 and 2, he gave a command to Noah on the next steps. What were they to do now that the earth was dried up? Remember, it was only Noah, his wife, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. Okay? So in total, there were eight people who had survived and all the animals. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, uh, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Uh, and the fear of you and uh, shall be upon every beast of the earth and every fall of, of every bird of the air and upon all things that move on the earth and upon the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you, even the green herbs I have given you to eat. So just like he commanded Adam, God was now commanding Noah to fill the earth and multiply, okay? Because there were only eight people. Can you imagine if the world only had eight people today, okay? So the world was only had eight people. And the next command God gave Noah was to multiply and fill the earth with humans again. Now, very many years later, after Noah and his sons had long uh, uh, passed on. In Genesis chapter 11, we find that the earth is now full of people. And uh, we want to see whether these people really uh, obeyed God, just like Noah and his sons who had gone before them. Now in Genesis chapter 11, my Bible says that the whole earth, was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, now the people on earth, eh, that they found a plain in the land of China and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower 
whose top may reach unto heaven and who uh, and let us make a name La, lest we be scattered upon abroad upon the face of the whole earth and the lord came down to see the city and the tower and the children the, that the children of men had builded and the lord said behold now all the people of the world is as one and they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do go to let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech so the lord scattered them abroad from there upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city therefore the name of it is called babel uh because the lord did there confuse or confound the language of all the earth and from there did the lord scatter them upon abroad upon the face of all the earth now the first thing that we uh, we, we see is that these people who now lived very many years after noah or the descendants of noah they did not keep the promises of god they did not uh they they did not keep the commandments of god they did not obey uh god just like noah did and they were rebellious okay you remember who else was rebellious satan okay satan was rebellious so instead of following god they decided to do evil things and so uh they decided that they are not no longer going to trust upon uh the the promises and the wisdom of god but they would trust upon their own strength and so they were under satan's control uh and their thinking was just like that of satan so satan always wants people to rebel against god satan wants you and i to always rebel against god and he was the one who was influencing these people to rebel against god okay so because of pride these people we've seen that they wanted to make a name for them selves they did not want to worship the one true god they wanted to make a name for themselves so uh pride was in their heart they wanted to be proud and they wanted to 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 build a name for themselves out of their own strength they did not want to rely on god for anything uh so god had told uh adam and noah that they were to multiply and take control of all the birds and animals and fish and god knew that if they stayed together everyone would quickly forget about god and that is what these people said you see what they've said in that verse in verse 4 they said let us build a, a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven okay so they had already forgotten about god and they wanted to exalt themselves so god sees everything remember nothing is hidden from god just like adam and eve had seen and god saw it uh god was seeing everything even now in fact in the book of hebrews my bible says that all things are naked and plain and nothing can be hidden from god okay hebrews chapter 4 uh so all things are open you even if you think you are doing something and mom and dad is not there and you think you are all alone remember god sees everything so god saw them and he knew their thoughts and he knew their plans no one can be able to keep a secret from god in proverbs 15 verse 3 the bible says that the eyes of the lord are in every place beholding both evil and good and so god decided to take uh, action into his own hands and he caused the people to speak different languages because the people could not understand no longer understand one another they separated into their different families and moved away and i think that is where all the languages of the earth can be traced from so you can imagine 
uh, they are building this city, they are trying to make a name for themselves, and uh, they are all speaking one language and they understand each other. Then all of a sudden, uh, they cannot understand each other because everyone is speaking a different language. Let's say I'm here working, 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 and I need a hammer, and I speak whatever I want, uh, or I say I want a hammer to the next person, and because they cannot understand me, they bring me a, a saw. And so I'm wondering uh, what's happening. And so that is what happened. So the people gathered into groups that could understand each other. And they were not, then the Bible says that God caused them to move into different regions of the earth. Now, among all these, there were a few people who continued to worship the true and living God. But majority of them turned away from God. Okay? Now, all these ancient stories that are in the Bible, you can see that there is always one thing that keeps on repeating again and again. And that is, people keep on rebelling and rebelling against God. People keep on following after their own sins and desires and forgetting about God. But God has not changed. And God will not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he knows and cares about what is up happening in each and everyone's uh, life. He knows what is happening in your life. He knows what is happening in my life. He knows what is happening in each and every person's life. And God judges sin. And not only that, but he is still calling people to himself to believe in him. And that is why God sent Jesus Christ here on earth so that people may believe in Jesus Christ, so that people may have eternal life. And I don't know whether you, you believe in Jesus Christ today. Are you like Noah who believed in God and was saved from the flood? Or will you choose to be like the people in Noah's time who chose not to believe in God and uh, they were punished by God? Okay. So uh, I'd like to end with a word of prayer. And in this prayer, I'm going to be making a a, a request to each and every person who is listening to me this day. If you have not believed in God, I'd like you to pray this prayer with me, okay? Our dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you, Almighty Father, uh, for the lesson that we've had. Lord, even as we've learned from the story of Noah, uh, that you always save uh, or that you are always with those people who believe in you. Lord, this day we pray for each and every one of us, O oh Lord, uh, who has chosen to believe in you, Almighty Father. Uh, may you help us in our walk with you. And if there is any among us who is not believing or is struggling to believe in you, O oh Lord, May you shed your light upon them. May you uh, reveal yourself to them, Almighty God, so that they may be able uh, to believe in you. May you open their eyes. May you open their ears so that they may be able to believe uh, in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be a light in this world and to save us all from our sins. Lord, we want to thank you for these stories that we find in the Bible that uh, on one hand we can see what is happening to those who believe in you, and on the other hand we see those w what happens to those people who rebel against you. Lord, may you give us the wisdom uh, to choose wisely what we learn and what we keep on uh, seeing each and every day. For it is in Jesus' name do we pray and believe. Amen. Okay? And until next time, my name is Teacher Kevin. It's been great hanging out with you. God bless. Hi kids, I hope you are good. Let's learn today's memory verse, which comes from Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. You will repeat after me, okay? Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. For thus says the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it, 
he created it not in vain he formed it to be inhabited i am the lord and there is none else let's do it one more time isaiah chapter 45 verse 18 it says for thus says the lord that created the heavens god himself that formed the earth and made it he has established it he created it not in vain he formed it to be inhabited i am the lord and there is none else so there is a word that i want to explain it to you inhabited it means to be lived on or populated okay see you have a good time bye Hello boys and girls it's time for the word of the day and I'm so excited Teacher Kevin Teacher Kevin it's time for the word of the day Hi John how are you I'm fine Are you ready for the word of the day Yes Great I hope you back at home are also ready for the word of the day Now today's word is inhabited Can you say it inhabited I can try in, in inhabited yes inhabited inhabited simply means to be lived on to be lived on on when god uh, told noah after he had come out of the ark to inhabit the earth he told him to live on the earth and multiply on it so the word is inhabited inhabited meaning to be lived on to be lived on, on. so what do we tell the others Bye children